I'll have to learn how to hold my camera. So hi everybody, welcome to Suburban Stone Age. I'm here in my car and it is raining. This is a significant storm. I actually just got an emergency alert on my phone uh, driving out here. And where I am right now is at a parking lot, a local parking lot for the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. And the reason for me being here, sitting in my car in this rainstorm, is because I wanted to test out something that I had just finished this morning, most of the way, which is my traditional Kinsale Irish cloak. And I'm hope I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, I finished sewing this cloak and I want to road test it. I want to take it out into the weather and find out, well, how does it work when it is driving rain in a big storm? Um, this is a historical garment. These have been around, as far as I understand, I learned so much when making this. Um, but, you know, this, this type of cloak um, was used in West Cork, they say, for over a thousand years. So it's a very historical garment. And part of what I love is putting these garments on. First of all, I love making them because you learn so much about the history. Clothing, the evolution of clothing and the evolution of human history and culture are so closely intertwined that when you make a piece of clothing, um, you learn so much about its origins and intentions and how it helped people and why they came about with this particular design. So this cloak, um, I'm going to find out how well it works. We're going to go out into the weather. Um, it's ankle length. It's got a big full ruffled hood. Um, and we're going to go out into a huge storm that is wet and muddy and rainy and windy. And probably there's going to be, it's going to be on the news tonight, but let's see how this cloak performs. So this is where I am. It's so pretty here. It's green. It's wet. It's Southern California in the rain. Uh, but it is lovely. And let's, uh, you can see the Ceanothus blooming in the background there. It's so pretty. Anyway, this is the backdrop for the test. Here we go. Wet, windy, rainy, muddy. <laughs> and this is me. I'm in my cloak, trying not to fall on the trail that's full of mud. I love the deep cloak. It's keeping me, it's keeping my head dry. The giant ruffle here. Um, I got to close it and walk though, because having to hold my phone while I do this means I'm exposed and I'm getting everything inside wet. So that kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm going to walk around and we will uh, see how we do. Walking and filming sucks. This is what we're dealing with here. Uh, I was going to go try to take shelter in that lowland right there, but you know what? No way. Flash flood warnings, heavy rain, forget it. I don't want a wall of water coming down and making this the wrong kind of video. So, yeah, it's raining. <laughs> All right, here's an interesting observation. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm kind of muffled because I'm in the hood. Um, look at this road. This is totally a disgusting, muddy, wet road horses have been on it people have been on it it's traveled it's rainy like this is what you would expect in the olden days i mean you gotta have clothes that can deal with this so the cloak is doing really well it's all redded and raining the cloak's doing really well what i'm glad i did when i made it was to hem it at ankle length and that's because i get all the advantages of it sheltering me from the wind and the rain but it doesn't drag in the mud and poo and everything else in this muddy, muddy, terrible road. So that would preserve, keep it clean and help preserve the garment a little bit longer. So that's helpful. That's a pro. So guys, this is going to be a terrible shot. I'm walking into the wind and it's hard to film and it's windy. Uh, so yeah, still working, but much more difficult to try to film, although I doubt that's an ancient problem. I think that's a modern problem. Anyhow, the cloak is wet and heavy, and I'm starting to get chilled. A lot of that is from the fact that I don't have a coat cloak clasp yet. I have to hold this with my hand. I'm getting one that hasn't arrived yet. Second of all, 
um, I think you're gonna get wet no matter what you do. So, the answer is wool. This isn't made of wool because I had to use whatever I had on hand, which happened to be thrift store material. But this is where wool would be great. Okay, I'm done. I gotta go in the car because I'm gonna drop my phone. <laughs> See you in a sec. Okay friends, I'm back in the car and I'm soaking wet and it was getting cold and it was windy. So here's what I learned. Cloaks work like tents that you wear. Hopefully they will shed the rain. Definitely they will cut the wind. They will get wet. They will get abused. They will get heavy. Depending on your cl climate, going to depend on what kind of material they're made from but in this case I think wool is sheep's wool is ideal because that's one of the fibers that stays warm when it's wet and you're getting wet so this was a successful experiment my cloak dry is surprisingly heavy I think that has a lot to do with the material that I used it's gonna be heavy no matter what there's so much yardage in this thing I used even heavier materials, so that adds to the weight, but when it's wet, it is heavy. And so it's heavy, I'm gonna go home and dry it off. Uh, I think if I didn't have to fumble around with my holding it shut and trying to film, uh, it would have been maybe a little less wet, but I learned a lot, this was fun. So, all right, I'm gonna head home and I'll see you, uh, see you there. Rain is coming down. This is a big storm for us. Okay, guys. I'm home. I'm drying off. I'm going to stay under a blanket for the rest of the day. It's still raining. But I loved that I could take my cloak out. It took about 35 hours of work to make that cloak, and I'm not quite done yet. There's finishing touches and embellishments left to do. But the fact that I could take it out into the rain and try it and walk a road and see how it worked in the weather was very informative. Um, so the conclusion of this video is that my particular cloak is more for looks than it is for hardcore function. It's not made of the right material, but it was made from the material that I had access to which, like I say, I got from a thrift store, and that was cost-effective. If I were to do it again, and cost was not an object, I would definitely go with wool. And that would, to my mind, make it more authentic and uh, appropriate for weather like this. Now, in Southern California, we only get weather like this maybe two to three months out of the whole year. So, when it comes to the climate that I'm actually living in and the cloak that I actually made, it's going to work. So uh, I can use it when it's windy, when it's cold, uh, probably six months out of the year. I won't use it at all because it'll be too warm. But I, I'm going to give it a B plus. Uh, it would be A plus if it were made out of wool and we had rainier weather more of the time. So thanks again for watching, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Hang in there and uh, stay dry, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.